this video is designed to help Year 12 accounting students understand and be able to record using identified cost for inventory. So it's really common for cost prices of inventory to change over time. This is because our suppliers might um, have an increase in their production costs and so they then pass on some of those increases or decreases to us when they sell us inventory. It doesn't necessarily mean that selling prices change. That's a decision for us as a business. We might decide to keep the selling prices the same and simply make less gross profit on each of those sales. When cost prices change though, we need to keep track of these different cost prices. So this example has been taken from the Unit 3 and 4 textbook by Cambridge and it shows us that we have two different cost prices of inventory. So you can see here on the 1st of October, the um, Woolly Good had on hand eight coats, WC1L, which it purchased for $100. So there's the cost price of $100. On the 2nd of October, they purchased some more inventory, but this time the cost price jumped from $100 to $120. Therefore, they've now recorded in their balance that they still have 8 of the, 10, um, of the $100 coats, but they also now have 20 of the $120 coats. Now importantly, order is critical in the inventory card. So you always list the unit costs in the balance column in the order in which they entered the business. So what that means is the earlier it entered or the older the inventory, the more towards the top it goes in your balance section. So how do we actually determine these cost prices and how do we know which one to use? Well, there's a couple of different methods and in year 12 accounting, we're going to look at two. The first one is identified cost and the second one is FIFO or first in, first out. And you're probably familiar with um, a bit of this from year 11 accounting. Each is a perfectly valid way of determining cost price of inventory, but certain businesses might choose to use one method over the other. Each method will give you a different valuation for cost of sales and inventory on hand at the end of the period. The only time this isn't true is if all of the stock or inventory is sold. And you'll explore that a little bit further when you start to do some work with the two different methods. So whilst both methods are valid, businesses need to make sure that they're not constantly changing methods. And the reason why is if we're let's say in February we used identified cost and then in March we use FIFO and then next month we go back to identified cost, it makes it really difficult for us to be able to compare our reports over time and track things like our movement and things like our cost of sales um, and things related to inventory. So how do I know which inventory valuation to use? Well, we look at things like our documents and it actually depends on the kind of transaction. So for purchases and purchase returns, the cost price of inventory will actually be stated on those source documents. And that's gonna be from the invoice and from the credit note. If it's not in the credit note, then we can actually trace it back to um, the, the particular transactions potentially. So these values, because they're cost price, are the values that should be used in the inventory card. For sales, for drawings of inventory and inventory for advertising, we might not necessarily have the cost price written in there. And the reason why is because on something like a sales invoice, we wouldn't actually put the cost price of items because that would then tell our customers how much that item cost and how much we're actually marking it up before we sell it to them. So this is where we need to know the cost of the inventory that's left the business. For sales returns, same process applies as sales. We don't actually tell customers the cost price of the item that they are returning. So the credit note will usually only identify the selling price. Therefore, we have to determine which sale is actually being returned and trace it back. And that's where having records like inventory cards is really important for businesses to be able to manage their stock or inventory. So identified cost is the first method. And this is a method where you physically mark 
or label each item in some way so you can tell which cost price it, it has. So some ways that a business might do this is they might actually store it in particular places. So they might use different boxes and they might say, okay, $10 stock goes in the green box, $20 stock goes in the blue box, things like that. Or they might label stock and use things like color coding or tags. So for example, something that's kind of similar is things like bread tags. So a lot of supermarkets will use different colored bread tags and that tells them which stock was baked on what day. And they can actually tell which item is oldest and which item is the freshest by the color of the tag. So this is one example of where you can actually use something like identified costs and labeling and color coding to help you. So here's just one example. Now, um, in the Cambridge textbook, which we use at, at the school I teach at, um, pages 189 to 195 give you lots of examples of how to use identified costs, but we're just going to look at one today. So on the 5th of October, Woolly Good sold 10 coats for $250 plus GST each. The codes on the price tags indicated that three of the coats, so some of the 10, were from the $100 stock and some of the, the uh, 10 sold, seven of them, were from the $120 stock. So if you remember, we actually have two different lines of stock here. So what we need to do is we need to record three of those items as being from the $100 stock and seven of those items being from the $120 stock. So what this means is we now update our balance. Because three of the $100 coats have left the business, we now have five of those left, and seven of the $120 coats have left, we now have 13 in our balance. So over in the general journal, what this is going to look like is our cost of sales and inventory is going to be calculated at 1140 So how they got this was they got the $300 of um, coats. So you can see here the first item, three at 100 plus they've sold seven of the $120 coats, which is 840 So that gives them their 1140 there. How they've calculated their sales is you can see that they sold the coats for $250 each and they sold 10 of them. So this amount is 250 times 10. We know that GST is going to be 10% of sales and then the amount that's going to account receivable is the total to be paid by customer. So that is the sales plus the GST clearing. So this is just one example of how you can use identified cost using a credit sale. So what are the costs and benefits of identified cost? Well, the benefits are that it's accurate and neutral. And the reason why is because we know exactly which stock has which cost price and that's due to our labeling of the stock. That means that we've got a really, really good chance of having faithful representation in our records and reports because it's very accurate in terms of knowing which cost price belongs to which item. But there are some large disadvantages. It may not always be possible to label or mark inventory. And that might be because we might deal with tens of thousands of items. And so that could be really expensive and take a lot of time to be able to label it. So for a lot of big businesses, so something like a supermarket, they would have millions of items of stock. So it'd be way too hard for them to use something like identified cost. So that's where they might choose to use a different method, something like FIFO, which will be explored a bit later. So you should now have a basic understanding of identified cost and how to record this into your inventory cards and how this might impact on things like the general journal as well.